Are you a female in your 50s and started to get hair loss? Maybe it started all of a sudden. Maybe it was a gradual process. My name is Dr. Tara Nella, and in this video, we're going to look at tips for hair loss in females after 50 years of age, what you can do to prevent this hair loss from happening and reverse the process if it's already started. So again, we're going to look at causes and solutions. As I said, my name is Dr. Tara Nella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know I'm making these videos because I enjoy helping people go beyond the basics, whether it's a confusing health symptom, diagnosis, or lab test. I enjoy helping people get a better understanding of what's going on with their health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health optimization, hormones, etc., click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at some tips for hair loss in females after 50 years of age. So in this video, we're going to look at tips for hair loss in females after 50 years of age. Around age 50 is when menopause starts to begin for most women. And so this is one of the things to think about with this age and afterwards for females. And this is when the level of estradiol starts to really go down. With this, there's a corresponding reduction in sex hormone binding globulin, also known as HGB. This HGB protein carries around many hormones, including estrogen, but also other hormones like testosterone and other androgens. As it relates to hair loss, testosterone and DHT, also known as dihydrotestosterone, are very important players in this process of hair loss, especially in females after 50 years old. Both testosterone and DHT are androgens, and they cause the hair follicle to deteriorate and miniaturize. With this, there's a corresponding reduction in the diameter of the hairs that come out of the hair follicle, how long it gets, and its overall activity. So with this, essentially, there's a smaller hair, hairs that grow less often, and hairs that are shorter. There's a similar process that happens in males, and this is referred to as androgenic alopecia. The same process can happen in females. The difference between males and females in this androgenic alopecia is that in males, it starts much earlier. This is because they have much higher testosterone relative to their estrogen for the vast majority of their life. So if you're a female in your 50s or starting menopause or pressing you know, further along, maybe you're even in your 60s and you're losing your hair, this process of androgenic alopecia is probably taking place. And it's because of relative higher amount of testosterone and relatively lower estrogen and sex hormone binding globulin is also much lower. So one of the main tips is to raise the sex hormone binding globulin. Now, sex hormone binding globulin basically binds up the hormones, whether it's estrogen or androgens like testosterone and DHT. It binds those up and prevents them from binding to the receptor. So if the HT can't bind to the androgenic receptor, it doesn't cause all these problems with the hair follicle. Raising sex hormone binding globulin is relatively easy to do by just taking estrogen replacement therapy or some hormone replacement therapy that has estrogen in it. But there are other ways to raise sex hormone binding globulin other than hormone replacement therapy, which we're going to look at as well. Hormone replacement therapy, estrogen replacement therapy is just the most straightforward way to do it. Definitely is predictable and you'll get a nice raise in your sex hormone binding globulin. Just so you know, too, when we're looking at this process of female hair loss after 50 years of age, the hair loss is typically going to happen six to 12 months after this process is happening. It's not going to kick in like one when you start menopause, but as the estrogen levels decline, 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 the androgenic effect is going up, up, up. And over time, six months, 12 months down the road, that's when that miniaturization starts to happen. And it will be normal, 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 and then all of a sudden kind of fall off a cliff. It seems like it's a sudden hair loss, but it's actually happening more gradually. So it takes many, many months of this ongoing effect of the androgens on the hair follicles to start to miniaturize it. 
And that's why using sex hormone binding globulin, raising that to kind of buffer some of the effect of that, those higher androgens helps, you know, stabilize things. So what do you do if you don't want to take estrogen or hormone replacement therapy? Well, phytoestrogens actually will raise sex hormone binding globulin as well. Phytoestrogens are basically plant-based estrogens, and they'll stimulate the, in the liver, increased production of this binding globulin known as sex hormone binding globulin. Most of these come from soybeans and soy products, and they're collectively known as soy isoflavones. One particularly potent soy isoflavone that will stimulate sex hormone binding globulin production is called Genesis. And I'll put a link to one that we use and trust in the description. Of course, decreased sex hormone binding globulin in estrogen are the only reasons women over 50 lose their hair. In the next video, we'll look at a more expanded list or causes of female pattern hair loss. So how did I do? Did that give you some tips and better understanding of hair loss in females after age 50? Let me know if there's still some lingering questions or things I need to address in more detail. Maybe just have a separate question on this topic in general. Drop those things in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.